everything springs from the Mother Earth. Everything returns to the Mother Earth. In the continent of South America, between two lofty ranges of the Andes, lies a vast high plateau more than two miles above sea level. In the thin, cool air of this high Andean plain dwell several million Indians. The Aymaras constitute the dominant ethnic group. However, many centuries ago, sometime between the decline of the Tiwanaku culture and the rise of the great Inca Empire, there lived in this broad area a mysterious race, quite distinct from the Aymaras of today. Little is known of them beyond the stark, grim evidence of their tombs. This and the strange, curious fact that these mysterious people of a remote and forgotten era are not yet totally extinct. Recently, an ancient mummy of a child was found. The garments and the particular headdress of the countless tiny braids were recognized as almost identical with those of an isolated group of Indians, the Chipayas, now living at the western edge of the plateau. Here then is Sebastiana Lupi, a child of the Chipayas who live in a barren country, isolated even from their Aymara neighbors whom they fear and despise. Wake up, Sebastiana. The sun is already high. Here is your small ration of food. Every day there is less. You are not the only one to suffer. Your mother suffers because she can't give you more. Your little brother, Pablito, and grandfather, Esteban, who loves you as much as your father did when he was alive. Take his food. You will have to walk a long way with your sheep, and you will get hungry. Your little flock is getting smaller. Only yesterday, two lambs died of hunger and thirst. Today, you must go a long way, over toward the pastures along the river Lauka. What a pity that your grandfather is so sick. He can't walk very much now. It was so nice to go out to the pastures with him. Don't forget, Sebastiana, your daily prayer to the God who protects sheep and llamas. Near the village, there is nothing but land that is dry and withered. You must go a long way. But here ends the territory of the Chapayas. You shouldn't go any further. Beyond is the domain of the Aymaras. Those Aymaras who forced your people into isolation. They must be very bad. But this is a little boy. He doesn't seem bad. Now the sheep have plenty to eat and they aren't going to die. And here's a shepherd, like you, just like the Chipaya children. 
what strange and pretty clothes he wears. His name is Jesus, and his town is big and with lots of houses. He's also surprised to see you and your funny clothes, which are just as strange to him. And he asked you so many things. What is your name? Where are you from? With whom do you live? Your friend is nice, Sebastiana, but you both walked a lot and he asked you to rest. Good idea. And in the meanwhile, the sheep will eat together and they too will become friends. It's noon, time to eat. What's the matter? Aren't you hungry, Jesus? He seems more interested in your sling. Just for him alone? How lucky the Aymara children are. He's inviting you to share his food. Roast meat, potatoes and bread. Bread, what a treat. How good it feels not to be hungry. The town of Jesus must be very nice. People there must not be hungry like in yours. And there must be lots of pretty things. Would you like to see his town? Would you like to go with Jesus? Why, yes, of course. day has passed, Sebastiana has not returned. Fear and anxiety in the town of the Chipayas. But the witch doctor knows all the things of this world and of the other world. Has the power of reading mysteries in the sacred leaves of the coca plant. Sebastiana's mother and grandfather know that he has never failed. Sebastiana lives, and she is now over beyond the river Lauca, in the hostile town of the Aymaras, at the foot of the volcano Sabaya. And you, so happy with Jesus, looking for goodies in the Aymara market. Your dream came true. Grandfather. Grandfather here? Yes, and taking a great risk to come and look for you. You must listen to him. Your family is worried.
You don't want to return? Is that right? It's true that we have passed through some very bad times, but you must also remember, Sebastiana, that once there were good times when your father was alive. Little Pablo is always a little devil. He used to drive your mother crazy. Remember? That was when we were building the new house, and you children were imitating the work in your play. To build a house is a lot of work. All the material had to be brought a long way, because here we don't even have straw. We have to buy it from the Aymaras and bring it here on our yamas. In those days, there was a lot of activity. And the busiest one, the hardest worker, was Manuel, your father. As the work was hard, the neighbors of the community helped us, as is the custom of the Chipayas. The bricks of turf had to be well joined so that the wind wouldn't come through. Our women are good weavers. They weave our clothing, our slings and adornments, and even our straw rope. Since we don't have wood, we buy sticks and branches from the Aymaras to make supports for the roof. The final days of work are the happiest, because then comes the big fiesta, the housewarming. Remember the preparations, Sebastiana? Your mother's hair was fixed in almost a hundred tiny braids. And from the braids hung the traditional larakis, worn only by the married women of the Chapayas. The larakis have come down to us from our ancestors. They are the pies dwelling of our past. Our past. In reality, our customs have changed very little. We have kept them pure along with our language. Remember how many people there were at the fiesta? Manuel brought the fattest yama to be sacrificed in our traditional relancha. The witch doctor put on his fiesta wig and his ceremonial garments to offer the blood of the yama to our deities. Above all, to Mother Earth, who received it from the children she herself has nourished. Then we invoked all the divine spirits, imploring their protection to the new house. Fiesta was beautiful, with our music and our instruments so different from those of the Aymaras.
everybody was happy. We old people played our ancient tunes, then everyone began to dance. Your mother's so happy, everyone gay. We drank and we laughed. Afterwards came hunger, sorrow, tears in the dry earth and in our hearts. To plant a few grains of quinoa, you had to go without. We sowed and sowed till not a single plot remained without planting. Yes, the year that followed was very bad. We broke the hard, salty soil in vain, which gave us no harvest. No, oh, we old people who have seen so much, we know how to hope and to bear up. Our last seeds of potato were our last hope. had to handle the grain with great care in order not to waste any of it. Even the old women helped, trying not to lose any not even a single grain. We waited and waited for the blessed drops of rain which wouldn't come. It was as if everything had died. Not a single dark cloud to give promise of rain. Only strange and barren clouds. Samiris, the gods who protect our animals. 
All our deities and protecting spirits received our tribute. desperate supplication. In those bad times, Sebastiana, the unity and strength of our race were proven. In despair, we called upon our native gods for help and also implored those Christian gods in whom we believe. We prayed, invoking the protection of all those powerful spirits who rule our lives. Santo Clemente, Marco, la Marco, Marco Polo, está vivo una tendencia también. Up to them, to the great mountains, to the volcano Sahama. Great river Lauca. To the greatest deity of our pueblo, the tower of the church. And to the Virgin Mary who is one and the same as our Mother Earth. Yes, Sebastiana, at last you understood, Grandfather, and you returned to your people. But now he can't go on. His legs won't carry him. So old and tired, he can't continue. You will have to go alone and send someone to help. You can't help him by yourself. He must be very sick. The village is still a long way off. Hurry, Sebastiana. to have to leave him alone. Lito, look who's coming. It's your sister, Sebastiana. And grandfather, all alone out there on the road and sick if night catches him, he'll die of cold. He must be rescued. Esavio, Sandalio, Miguel, and the rest. You must go and bring him. Quick, hurry. Poor grandfather, the most beloved man of the Pueblo. There is nothing to do but wait. dug his grave with the tools that belonged to him. Grandfather has returned to the Mother Earth whom he so loved and respected. Now he is hers. Forever. Life is a curious thing. 
death is strange and incomprehensible. In a few hours, grief has made you a woman. How much you have learned from your grandfather. You know what you owe to your people, to their traditions, to their invincible spirit. You must struggle with them, sharing in their joys and bearing their hardships. You have learned, Sebastiana, that Mother Earth gives us life and she takes us back in the end. She is the beginning and the end of all things. You and all of us belong to her. Do you understand now what your grandfather told you? That you should return to your people? Over whom the gods of the universe keep vigil? Yes, it is as if from his grave your grandfather were saying to you, Return, Sebastiana. It makes no difference how hard our life is. Someday the sun will shine again for the Chipayas. Return without fear. <laughs>